All right, YouTube, this Detroit's HPTV coming to you out of Detroit. Tuesday morning. It's a good Tuesday morning. But we're going to deal with some issues. Today, I want to talk to you about these so called liberal, black liberals, black Democrats, how the fear mongering and the hatred for Trump has them talking crazy. I mean, they talking crazy, but everything they accuse Trump of and the conservatives is what they're doing. You know what I mean? Interfering with elections, making all kind of crazy statements. You know what I mean? Saying if you support Trump, that, that there's something wrong with your mental capacity, as if you can't see what Biden is doing to this country, as if you can't see Biden in full dementia. I mean, at some point, you got to ask, are they just very disingenuous? Do they even believe the things that they're saying as it relates to the Democratic Party? Or have they just gotten a check and selling out the rest of the community? But we're going to talk about Charles Barkley first. Charles Barkley came out and said that if he sees a black Trump supporter in a Trump T-shirt, he's going to punch him in the face. Okay. That's a threat of a sort, right? Could conservatives say that? If I see you wearing a Biden shirt, I'm going to punch you in the face. He said it like he didn't say anything. You know what I mean? Like you're going you, like to walk up, you're going to punch somebody in the face because you don't like their T-shirt. But then on top of that, what do you think they're going to do? Charles Barkley, you're so out of touch with the black community, you don't even realize if you walk up and put your hands on anybody, you won't have to, your last worry will be about voting. You won't even be worried about voting after that. What make you think that anybody is listening to you buffoons, you democratic shields, you traitorous, buck dancing, bootlicking times? Y'all got a lot of nerve. Well, I'm going to do this clip. I want y'all to look at this clip with me. It's for fair use under the 1976 Copyright Act for educational purposes and commentary. Check out what Charles Barkley says. My name is Joyce Smith Jones. My question is, why are some of our folks in our community still willing to support Trump after so much, he continues to be um, transparent, about how he feels about our community. He has always been a racist and has never supported anything, even when he was a Democrat. And he, you know, was in the in crowd and hanging out with Jay-Z. He's never really been someone that we should trust and get behind. But yet so many of us are still willing to support this man. And I just don't understand why when he's clearly showing us that if he gets reelected again, we might as well be reporting to the nearest white person. All right, guys, so we got to talk about the left, particularly black liberals or black Trump deranged individuals, okay? Because I'm not sure if Charles Barkley is a liberal, right? But we got to talk about Charles Barkley first. As his Trump derangement seems to be getting worse and worse and worse, okay? He definitely has a severe case, a case that is so... Uh, severe that he is now threatening violence against individuals who get caught wearing a Trump mugshot shirt. Now, this comes after uh, Trump did a speech at the Black Conservative uh, Federation conference and the mainstream liberal media, uh, black liberals got triggered by it. And apparently, Charles Barkley is one of these Trump deranged black people uh, that apparently has an issue with how Trump is trying to reach the black. <clears throat> Let me say this, that, that the, 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 the sister that was talking before, you could tell how ill-informed she is. You know, you could tell she's wore down and broke down from the, the fear-mongering of the Democratic Party because none of the things that she says were even factual or even remotely true. Trump has never showed as much contempt for the black community as Joe Biden. That's a fact. There's so much evidence to prove it that how delusional do you have to be to ignore 
what Joe Biden has said out of his own words. They're going to put you back in chains. You ain't black. Racial jungles. Crime. You know what I mean? To ignore his actions means there's a certain amount of delusion. Let's see what he says. Take a look. Chad, and you know who embraced it more than anybody else? The black population. It's incredible. You see black people walking around with my mugshot. You know, they do shirts. When you heard that, what did you think? <sighs> Big sigh. First Big of all, sigh. I'm just going to say this. If I see a black person walking around with Trump mugs, I'm gonna punch him in the face. Charles, I uh, don't, no, Gil, 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 Gil. You, I, you really can't say that because a, you don't mean that. Oh, I mean that sincerely. He said he mean it sincerely. Good luck with that, Charles, because you've been a sellout for the last thirty years. Nobody respects you. You walk around here through the city, putting your hands on people. I guarantee you, you will get your mind right after that. And to sit on there on Gail King, y'all just talk so black, bad about black people who are conservative as if the black people who are conservative and who are informed can't see you clearly that, you know, you are part of a godless movement, a demonic movement. You know what I mean? An anti-God movement in the Democratic Party. That's why in the end, the only thing the Democrats is offering the community is abortion. And they're going to say that in the end. Let's finish listening to Charles. I'm going to just tell you something. And then you will be arrested for assault. And then what? I'm going to bail myself what? out and go celebrate. <laughs> if I still Don't seriously. encourage him. Don't encourage him. Okay, but yeah, go ahead. Seriously. Continue. <laughs> First of all, if I was at that. At that conference. Yeah. I would have got up and walked out. That was an insult to all black people. Because he basically just saying. And first of all, black, to, to compare black history where we've been discriminated against to his plight. Yes. Well, first of all, he's a billionaire. Mm -hmm. And they're prosecuting him for stuff he did wrong. They be race baiting like a mug. As if we don't understand that all Americans need to stick together with this invasion of immigrants and these things that's going on in our society. <clears throat> if you agree with me, and you, if any of the patriots out there, any of the patriots out there catching me this morning, put we the people in the chat for the comment. Or if you don't feel like putting we the people, put don't tread on me. Let me know you hear me when we say that it's time out for the race baby. It's we the people, the patriots, American born and raised. We're not sitting up here going back and forth and rehashing these, these uh, salacious statements and things that they saying they coming out and acting like they just got off a plantation but they still own a plantation because they refuse to think freely prosecuting him for stuff he did wrong and for him to it's compare still in the court system charles we have to wait it's still in the court system but continue continue well continue. They, some of the stuff is true they did storm the capitol people, yeah. they did say that the the election was stolen. Those yeah. aren't lies, Gail. Yeah, yeah. Those are they facts. did say that. They okay. Say that. But to compare, I would have got up and walked out mm -hmm. because it's not a fair comparison. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a billionaire. He's had a great life. He's been president of the United States. To insult black people who have been discriminated against all these years, to put them in the same category, I, 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 I was just offended. I, yeah. I mean, yeah, so Charles Barkley is offended by that. A lot of the mainstream liberal media was offended by that. They were offended by Trump selling sneakers, even though he didn't target black people specifically, but um, they were offended by the idea that black people might like Trump's shoes. Uh, but yet, they're not offended by Kamala Harris throwing a White House house party for black people while playing sexy red and rap songs doing this party of drinking and probably smoking uh, at the White House. This event means to me, it's put everything into perspective. It shows me everything is... Do y'all see your old vice president throwing a thought party? Kamala Harris. And guess what? She ain't even black. She's Indian. 
She didn't start saying that she was black until she became a politician. Really? She was an Indian, proud Indian, until she seen that she could use the fact that she was a non-white and usurp the black community as a political base and help the democratic apparatus. Clearly you see she's not the sharpest knife in the drawer. What is her usefulness to such a cabal like the Democratic Party? It's the fact that she passes for black. Black people, y'all ever seen, uh, what's that movie? It's a tearjerker, it's an old movie. An uh, Imitation of Life, when the lady was black but she was passing for white, how tragic it was. It's tragic to see an Indian sell out her whole nationality and character and personality and perpetrate like she's a black person just to mislead black people. Isn't that just so nefarious and evil? My vice president's black. What you mean I can't do it? My book out and this group of leaders, I know that the future of our country is right. Our nation needs you and I look forward to your continuing leadership. Welcome to the house party at DQ. Being here at Vice President Harris's home tonight was an absolute honor. The embodiment of black excellence in the room was overwhelming and I'm just so honored. Kamala Harris is not black. This is just gratifying. I mean, when you really choose God and put the first of all that you do, He will just open up many doors for you. When you seek Him first, all will be added unto you. And so I'm blessed to be a part of this event. I am so excited to be here, like to be in the home of the first African American female vice president of the United States. You can't be to me. She's not African American. Again, she's Indian. See how delusional these people is. They just keep saying, oh, she's African-American. Oh, she's black. Oh, no, she's not. These Democrats, man, they want to pee on your head and tell you it's raining all the time. But I'm just so excited to be here, so thank you so much for the opportunity. Yes, I want you guys to understand. Trump selling a mugshot shirt, uh, offensive. Trump selling sneakers, offensive, right? All this is supposed to be offensive to black people. But you have the Biden administration holding house parties for black students where they come and they drink while listening to uh, Sexy Red, a degenerate rapper, um, that's not offensive, right? That's not pandering, okay? That's not trying to make... We're going to stop right here because I don't want y'all to see some else, see some, uh, see something else. Y'all remember uh, Issa Rae, this lady, and Tiffany Cross? They made their careers pandering, denigrating black men. And now, after they were fired, they come to YouTube and they set up a podcast, not realizing that podcasting is the people's platform. And we get to critique your shenanigans on our platforms. So let's listen to these fired uh, race baiters. They're, 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 but they've already been fired from mainstream. Now, now they're trying to race bait on YouTube. And inspired to go to the polls for some really interesting reasons. Um, there was a time um, in our electorate where um, someone who appeared to be the first real shot we had um, at a presidency um, after the ways, the many ways in which Reverend Jackson paved the way, right? Mm -hmm. um, but we knew that that was even a long shot. Barack Obama ran on hope and change, change we could believe in. It wasn't substantive policy. It was the hope that America could, act, could actually finally serve us. To the black community, under Obama, did hope, Feed your children and save your homes when the bubble bursts. Did, did, did hope feed you 
or put a roof over your head when everything was collapsing around that kind of election based policy we're running on hope running on hope and then there are these other folks and and and, and we have to be really careful with like well rappers don't really move the needle there's a reason why there are surrogate operations in every campaign from the mayor to the governor to the president it does move the needle on some things i am insulted by the direction in which Donald Trump has taken this thing, but I'm not going to be intellectually dishonest and say that broad stroke themes don't work to move bodies to the polls. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Here's what she's missing. First and foremost, she would be offended no matter what Trump says, right? Trump comes out here and talks about giving money to HBCUs, Opportunity Zones, the First Step Act, uh, all the things that he did that disproportionately benefited black folks. It's not like these people don't give him credit for it, right? And that's a majority of what he talked about at the conference. But see, what these people key in on is Trump talking about mugshots, right? In which he is basically saying, look, I'm being discriminated against. Uh, and I feel like there are people, particularly in the black community, who always you know, talk about being discriminated against who can relate to that, right? Now, again, he wasn't trying to say that all black people are thugs and criminals or anything like that. But again, the reaction from the media would make you think that that's what the whole conference was about when it wasn't. So to assume that people are voting for Trump based off a of mugshot, I mean, I think these people are the ones that are insulting the intelligence of black people. I actually think that a lot of black people are voting for Trump, particularly black men, because of reasons that I stated before. Economic reasons, right? Economic opportunity. OK, wanting to be more pro business, wanting to be about getting their money. Right. Also, you got to look at the border situation. A lot of black people found out the hard way that hey, a little immigration is not pro black. Right. It's not necessarily beneficial for the black community to have illegals poured into this country because the white liberals are basically placing the illegals in black neighborhoods. So now black people have to compete with the illegal immigrants for jobs in which the illegal immigrants are going to drive down wages because they're going to be willing to work. As far as it relates to competing with illegals, we got the home court advantage. They got to learn the language. <clears throat> Offer them no aid and comfort. You know why? You can't offer them aid and comfort because it goes against the aspirations of the citizens. They have a name for that. Working with the enemy, you know? So the immigrants is a whole nother problem that we're dealing with because they're consuming resources like locusts. You know what I mean? And we listen to these talking airheads. I'm not going to call them talking heads. I'm going to call them talking airheads because listen, continue to listen. Wait till you hear Tiffany Cross. They fired her from MSNBC and threw her to the internet. Now listen to how she's going to be talking. Less, and it's going to negatively uh, impact black folks. They're taking up resources that should and could be going to black people. So I think black people are realizing that the Democrat Party has screwed them over with a number of policies. And I think that a lot of the decisions that are being made are not being made out of emotions or campaign slogans or because of mugshots. I think it's being made because they see the writing on the wall that, hey, things were better under Trump. Than they are right now, right? And I think that's basically what it comes down to. But there are a group of black folks, particularly black liberal women, who don't care about reality, right? They are looking for the handout. They are looking for, you know, Democrat solutions, and they're not going anywhere, right? This is why when they actually really talk about the black vote, they're not talking about black women. They're really just talking about black men. Shame on him for saying that his mugshot was enough to move a base. But I think the real thing is, and this might be a, a whole ass TED Talk podcast that we need to do to unravel it. There is something remarkable about someone who can relate to the, the many challenges that we've had. It is not Donald Trump, to be super clear. But I think that it is highly worth considering as someone who is a student of political strategy 
what it means to find someone who is, has been othered. What it means to find someone who has had to pull themselves up by their bootstraps after they found some boots that they. I'm going to step in right here because she said political science. That's my major. I majored in political science. I went to, that's my major. And I can make it real plain how delusional she is. In a republic such as this, you never go against the patriots. You never go against we, the people. Don't tread on me. That is what this country is based on. It's based on that principle. Taxation without representation is tyranny. She claims to be a political scientist. I doubt it. Because she's going against the republic. You got to read the Constitution sometimes and think about what they really were saying. You know what I mean? We can we can look at it and say, oh, we were black people didn't mean to us. It was a document about uniting colonies into a force that would eventually dominate the world. Think about that. They create a document unite the people and then take the country then dominate the world as an agenda what man worth his salt on this earth wants to be a peasant a beggar the whole thing with politics is politics is based on power who wants to be powerless in a world as turbulent and as violent as this one? But we're going to listen to these talking ladies' heads. You know what I mean? I don't know what to call them. They just find somebody with a cute face and throw them up there and think we're going to listen to everything they say. Nope. They could actually afford. What it means to yeah. really like be one of the people who was ostracized and not really allowed. You know what I mean? Like, what does it mean sure. to have this person who really understands the plight of a community that has been so marginalized despite our significant contribution? And I think there's language at play that he has effectively used to reach some of our folks who haven't felt heard in the process. The problem is, I need y'all to understand what gas lighting is. Here we go. Here we And she finna gaslight the hell out of y'all. Watch. Go with the Trump derangement, right? This is gonna be peak Trump derangement. This isn't hope and change you can believe in. This is someone who is preying on you. Not praying. Praying, pouncing on you where you've been most vulnerable, playing like they understand what you're saying. Have you ever been in a relationship with a dude who has never heard you? And then all of a sudden, when you're about to walk out that door, the dude starts telling you everything you ever told him. Is that not the Democrat Party? <laughs> right? That is the Democrat Party. What she's describing is the Democrat Party. I don't think she's smart enough to understand that. She's trying to attribute this to Trump, but no, no, no. Actually, this is an accurate description of how the Democrat Party treats black people because that's essentially what they're doing. What you just saw from Kamala Harris in that house party is her realizing that, hey, we need to do some major outreach because the Negroes might leave the Democrat plantation. And like, you know, when you said such and such and so and so, I feel you, I get it, I got you, I'm with you. And they're doing all that. And then you're like, oh, okay, he really gets it. I finally feel heard. And then you go back. Why is Angela telling us? Again, this is, this is Democrats, right? That is how Democrats treat black people, right? Uh, Trump is just Trump, right? Trump is just Trump. But that is actually how Democrats treat black people. That's the irony here. <laughs> you on some people's streets right now. Listen, but I, I want to. We got to nail this so we get it right, yeah. so we can see the yeah. demon coming. Yes, that is what he's doing. And then when he gets you, boo boo, he gonna say, "Actually, you, I am still the law and order president. Your ass going back to jail for nothing." Yeah, we need more law and order, <laughs> right? And it's not about sending people to jail for nothing. It's about locking up. If I don't remember correctly. 
We had four years of Trump, and wasn't nobody around there getting locked up for nothing. People were getting out who had been locked up for nothing. Let's keep it real. Criminals who are actually committing crimes, uh, a lot of whom are committing crimes in black neighborhoods, hurting black people, innocent black folks. Yeah, we need to send them to jail. You're not cleaning up any black neighborhood or any liberal city without being tough on crime. Right? You, just, you have to be. It, it is what it is. And when he gets you, he's going to say, I do still think Harriet's ass deserves to be on a $2 bill and not a 20 When he gets you, he is going to say, I do think you should be sharecropping and not holding shares in this corporation. Yeah. When he gets you, he's going to say, actually, grab them by the vagina. Gaslighting. Yes, he said he's going to tell us to grab them in the biscuits. Tell me the same gaslighting. Don't let them have IVF. Don't let them have an abortion. I don't care if there was rape or incest involved. And I told you. What is it with these Democrats in abortion? They think we get up every morning and go to work and try to ink out a living to take care of our children and we worry about abortion? We look at our children and we love our children and we love our grandchildren. And abortion be the furthest thing from our minds while we're trying to ink out a living to create a legacy with our children. And they send these democratic shields out here and they said, oh, we got, he's not going to let y'all abort your kids no more. Don't y'all want abortions? Y'all don't want jobs. Y'all don't want economic stimulus. All we want is abortion. Yeah, yeah. Let's try that. On top of that, fuck your birth control. That's what we're dealing with. Yeah. He's saying all yeah. the right things, but he's doing it for all the wrong reasons. He hopes your ass stays at home. He hopes you go to the polls yeah. and vote for him. He hopes you. Look at these two women, uh, her and then Tiffany Cross. If y'all don't want no kids, why don't y'all wear a condom or just close your legs, please? get a nigga for Trump t-shirt and then you are boo-boo the fool and I don't think that we're that dumb prove me right that we're not yeah. that dumb what? I didn't cuss I didn't got in trouble with my pastor my yeah, mom and daddy, daddy and all that upset. but that was necessary I've it was I mean look again she's talking about Trump but that describes the Democrats that's what Democrats do every election season it's just so funny how she can't see that from her own side of the political aisle Right. Trump is just coming around and saying, well, I did do these things for you. I did do the First Step Act. I did do uh, HBCU funding. OK, I did do um, uh, Opportunity Zones. OK, under my economy, uh, black unemployment was at the lowest in history at the time. OK, uh, you had significant increase in uh, net worth for black households under my administration. He's just stating facts. He's just stating fact, and there's no reason to believe that I I'm in there on that one, YouTube. Good Tuesday morning, something to think about. Think about how everything the Democrats accuse Trump of or the conservatives of, they do. Think about how careless and reckless they talk as it relates to people who don't support Biden. You know what I mean? For Charles Barkley say, oh, he'll punch you in the face. Man, if he punched anybody in the face, you had a right. I hope he do it in the South where they can stand their ground. You know what I mean? Because, man, you ain't punching nobody in Detroit. I mean, you might punch somebody in Detroit, but I think they're going to up I think they gonna up a stick on you. You know what I mean? A pipe, a pole, a blicky, a burner, a switch, a Drago. That's what you're going to get if you be around the city. Just putting your hands on people. You're going to look like a big old block of Swiss cheese, Charles Barkley. You know? And the other talking heads, you know, if y'all just want abortions, just please. Please get a condom. A condom is cheaper than abortion. Last I checked. You know, I'm old now, so I wouldn't know. You know, I haven't, you know, bought a condom in a long time, but hey. I know they got to be cheaper than abortion at this point, don't they? Well, anyway, for Tuesday, that was uh something to think about.
we're gonna we're gonna say we seen the Democrats on display. Sign it to you out of Detroit. Peace. Keep y'all head on a swivel as always. Like, share, and subscribe.